Greeting, shoppers. Today is the crafting stream, I promised you. Here is my lovely table full of stuff. And the, the reason I have this table full of stuff right here is because I want to show you kind of what we're working with. It's all beaded, so everything we're doing today is going to be super simple. But I have stuff for a masculine or a feminine bracelet. And you might be asking me, well, what is the difference? So first, I'm going to go through some of these. This is just where I bought this stuff from. It doesn't have my address on it or anything. So I got these cute little hearts I can make earrings out of or charms. But they're glass. Okay, so I have a variety of materials here. Some of it's all mixed together, like this pink stuff. It's like glass, plastic, metal. Some of it's really cool. Eh, screw the mask. Okay. I've been thinking about just doing either masculine or feminine. In an ideal world, I would love to do both today, but I don't think I will have the stamina for it. So, when you're dealing with masculine versus feminine jewelry, one of the things you have to be aware of is generally masculine is bigger beads. So, like, a lot of the stuff I have here, like these little green glass ones, are generally going to be more for the feminine because they will basically get lost on people with like bigger bones which tend to be men more traditionally we're talking cis men now by the way these are mother of pearl that are dyed but the holes are so small i don't think we'll be able to get them on our elastic we have tubes of i love six o seed beads and that's what these are they're the bigger ones. These are really pretty, like, almost like sea glass green. And then this one is more of a uh, lime. I have some opaque turquoise. The reason I have turquoise and purple here is that my, it's my favorite, my sister's favorite, sorry, color combination. Though I happen to love purple as well. Hence my eyes. These are literally dyed freshwater pearl. Again, the whole, they drill the holes pretty small for this kind of thing. So it's something you have to be aware of because the whole size does matter when you're dealing with this. Okay, so I'm working my way through because I want to get to the masculine stuff because I'm going to try to make my husband a bracelet. I would like to make my sister one as well, but I don't think we'll have time for both. So here's more of that green. And then I literally have, they're light in color, but this is Chunky Amethyst. They're so light in color, they look almost white, but they're very pale purple. And they're real gemstones. And they would make an okay bracelet, but you have to be aware when you're dealing with, like, bracelets, if you do them too tight and they're the chunkier beads, some people who are not used to wearing jewelry will not find them comfortable. So that's something you got to keep an eye on, although these are very smooth, so they should not be a problem. I have like all these like smaller blue ones also for the sister at the time. Okay, these I was going to pull up for my husband, but they are tube beads. And if you do not make a long project with them, they tend to like kink the bracelet off. So they're better used in a necklace. But these are real gemstones, or some kind of stone, rather. These are just random findings, like little charms or little attachments. I got these really pretty green ones at our garage sale, which will go with my green sea glass type beads at some point. Why am I showing you all this? Because I want you to see all the different types of beads. These are my purples mixed together. All the different types of beads you can get because there's a lot. You can work with glass, plastic, metal, real gemstone, regular stone. And these are regular stone. They are just like, I think, little pieces of maybe granite. And they feel like little stone. They feel as if you would rub your finger across a smooth stone. 
they are not anything but like tumbled and whatever they are not polished up like a regular gemstone so they have a more rough look and even though these are little squares they would actually work really well for a masculine bracelet if that's what you're into these are my light pinks for and my camera's having having a day are my light pinks for everything going on for valentine's day uh, my mom loved pale pinks so i always keep some around here are more of those like pretty green ones i have some turquoise some of its plastic turquoise some of its real with some metal that i bought a while ago at a garage sale now these are I don't remember what these are. I want to call it Serpentine, but that ain't it. Maybe Green Adventuring. Which, since it is the bigger type of bead, would also go well for a masculine bracelet. They're almost like, some of them are almost black in color. This is a delicate, again, Amethyst. Big fan of Amethyst. Um, it's my birthstone. It's my husband's birthstone. My sister loves it because of how it's purple, obviously. Okay, so this is a bag I have with like mixed charms and glass beads. And these are basically focals. So generally, I don't see men having charm bracelets in the traditional, I should say masculine and feminine. I don't see masculine bracelets having charms as much as like females do. Uh, yeah, I need the light from the window. Hi, shy guy. How are you? Otherwise, if it's dark outside, I have no prayer. But yeah, in this bag are my little heart bracelets. You can't really see. But I got them on clearance, and some of them are broken. So I thought I could actually, like, make something with these. But these are pretty ostentatiously plastic gems. So they might not go well if you're looking for a more um, refined style. This will definitely lean towards someone younger. Unless you like maybe take one of the beads and use it as a focal point. You can do that too. Or maybe in a necklace with other stuff. But we're not going to worry about that quite yet. This is natural stone as well. Again, it's very... It's different colors of like whites and browns and grays. Very good for a traditionally masculine bracelet. I'm sorry I've been feeling down. If you want to talk about that, I'm around. I know that I don't hit up Discord very much. I know, I feel guilty about that, but... Okay, so in, in the uh, search for life and things... I also want to show you some of my charms. They're, they're in this uh, purple organza bag. I have some moon and star charms with little uh, rhinestones in them. I have... the These are, you won't be able to tell because they're in a little bag, but they're the disability pride symbol or the disability like accessibility symbol. You know, the little wheelchairs you see on, like, parking spaces? That's what those are. Uh, this July, I may make some uh, disability pride jewelry. And that's what they are. This, These are awesome. I'm going to pull one out and show y'all my little dragons. Because remember when I said that about uh, masculine presenting? Usually don't like charm bracelets or whatever. Well, if you put one of these bad boys, one of these bad boys right here. On like just the middle of the bracelet, a guy would love it probably if they're in the dragons at all. A girl would love it too, but it's usually uh, very uh, big for feminine presenting jewelry. Not like that matters. I'm just making the delineation between masculine and feminine uh, in case some of you are worried about like the, you know, people who like go a traditional way. I'm not saying, oh my God, you have to do this. Some women love big, chunky, funky bracelets, and some men don't like the presence of a lot of jewelry, so they'll wear something a little more understated, and it's all valid, and everything in between. 
These are more hearts. They have the metallic backs to make them shine. I don't have jump rings big enough to make them into charms. And these are my, mixed with my owls, but they are little glass flower heart pendants. So you can make really nice little necklaces out of those. Uh, they are already hooked up to that kind of hardware. So you wouldn't be able to make, let's say, a necklace out of them. Or not a necklace, earrings, I'm sorry. And since they're hooked up with a pendant like hardware, you can't really make them into uh, charms for a charm bracelet unless you wanted to outfit them as such. But again, that's fine. Um, these are, again are stone. And they're flat. Yeah, I love dragons. So that's why I have them. I'm like, fuck that. I don't know what I'm doing with them, though. I bought them. But the Disability Pride stuff, I'm going to make this July because that's our Pride Month. For those of you who don't know, and I'm going to make them send them out to people, hopefully this Pride Month. I, I lost the last one in grief and whatnot. Okay, so this would be okay. These are flats for more masculine because, again, they're bigger. This is my bag of catch-all stuff. And sometimes I just add them together because I need, like, more space, so... In here are more charms. Like, I got my Christmas charms in here, like, right there, but we're not in Christmas. I have red beads for Valentine's Day. I have some blue ones. I have more heart charms right here. But I don't think I would use those on jewelry necessarily. I'm sure you could, but they're tagged more as embellishments. I have these things back in here. I'm going to... Pull out. These were my like different colored crystal beads I have. So they're like little crystals, but again, they are pretty small to use for someone if they perform more masculine appearance in jewelry. So now I have more stuff. This is just my shortened list of all my materials, and you're gonna be like, well, what is this then? This is probably going to be the piece de resistance of our bracelet today. I know you cannot tell, but these are almost like a, uh, not blueberry color, but sort of. Blueberry color amethyst. They're like a very, very dark purple, somewhat black. And since they are 10 millimeters, they will work great for... Uh, masculine presenting person's bracelet. So what we have for masculine is, don't you leave, don't you leave, that's, okay. So I'm thinking the gray with the purple. And then, I don't know about putting the green with the, the purple because they are literally opposites. But I suppose it depends on what I do. We are going to, meanwhile, put these away, this flat one. So these are what we're working on now. And we could use these as little pops of color. I really wish I had white beads that were bigger, that were rounder for this particular purpose, but we don't. So there we go. We are going to make my Valentine a bracelet today. Like I said, I would love to make a masculine and femme presenting bracelet. But that's not in the cards. I do want to show you this because this is a piece of crystal I bought from a, I want to say a rocksmith. But he's like a, he works with gems and rocks and can identify like all of Wisconsin's rocks. And he's a very amazing man. His name is Jeff. Not going to say his last name on here for reasons. But uh, Jeff sells these things and makes jewelry out of them. And I was thinking about wire wrapping this. And if you don't know what wire wrapping is, it's where you take a spool of jewelry wire, depending on the gauge, and you like wrap it around a stone, and then you can make it into a pendant. Now this brown box here is not for my dildos. It carries my elastic thread. And two of these elastic threads are very pretty. They're the gold and the silver but they're functionally useless. 
unless you have somebody who really wants to baby their jewelry and not wear it often, the uh, clear or white cord is where it's at because it's actually stronger. And what we're looking for is strength, especially for someone who, like my husband, doesn't wear jewelry a lot, if ever. Okay, so this is my string cutting scissors. I have it in this box for this purpose. Why? You do not want to use your crafting scissors as far as like your cutting scissors for your cords and your floss and whatnot as a regular cutting scissors because paper dulls blades like anything else. It's just, it tears through them. Unless you sharpen your scissors, which I do not, you will lose a lot of sharpness in your scissors very, very quickly. Okay, so these are my angel wing charms. They look a little like turds. Okay, I have just a bunch of other stuff in the box, including dental floss. Why dental floss? I hope that paper didn't dox me in there. I don't know what it said. I don't, <laughs> I'm like, I'll look at it later. Um, dental floss, it doubled over, makes a very strong necklace if you are doing an infinite strand. And what an infinite strand is, is it is a necklace without a clasp. So you make it very long. Also, since I might not be getting to the female bracelets today, or if I'm presenting, this is one I made myself a while ago for Valentine's Day. It has the hearts. It has the little pink beads. I made myself earrings to go with it. I wear clips. I don't have pierced ears. Okay, so we are going to look at our string. And this one, you can barely see, is the winner. So we are going to put this aside. Do not clip your string off your card unless you have it affixed to the table with some tape. Why? Because if you, like, are stringing the beads and you, like, pull them and then they fly off the other side so don't do that just just don't take it from me okay now I will ask my charming assistant for a lid of a bowl or something like that or a lid to one of our Tupperware type situations or a plate that I can put beads on a plate a bowl something because I need to cut these two strands apart to use them. Thank you. I've been doing this for years. I do the most simple things ever. Honestly, it's just stringing beads and then tying them off. Thank you. Okay, here's our little work zone. You're gonna be like, why do you need this? Because when you cut this open, the beads are not gonna be on this string anymore. And a lot of beads, when you buy them, if they don't come in a container of some sort, will come on a string or a piece of wire. Okay, let me find the place to cut the wire. There we go. I know you could do it, Toluca. Very good. And now, they will not be all over your table. Some people have little bags or containers. To sort things in, I do, but I have so many beads that it's literally unreal. So sometimes I just go with Ziploc bags. All right, our holes look big enough. I'm wondering if like I can hold this up to the camera. I don't know if you can see the hole in there, I can. But that looks big enough to be strong. Okay, what about these? I'm still a little nervous using these green ones with the purple ones because I feel like that's going to be a very odd color combination. But then again, like I said, it's it'll all be okay eventually. Even if it's not my favorite design. My husband likes blue and orange, but I don't really have... Uh, big ones in that color combination. And he said he'll wear whatever I make. God bless him. 
But yeah, since these are such a dark purple over here, let me dig these out. These are such a dark purple, and the other one, and some of them, and some of them are such a dark green, I think we can get away with it. Let's hope so. All right. So now you figure out your pattern. Now I used to do an eternity pattern and that is repeating it all the way around. But if you have a like major midpoint, let's say I put a dragon on this bracelet. Let's just say I did, I'm not going to. But if I did, instead of doing a eternity pattern where it was all the way around the damn bracelet, what you would do instead is when you get to the middle of the bracelet, you would make it distinctive. Like I would have like, let's say two of those white beads and then I would put them like on each end of the dragon, let the dragon be the middle. And then I would mirror the pattern back down the other side. But since we are doing just a simple pattern, we can probably get away with an eternity pattern. So I'm going to start stringing. Hopefully all these beads will be amazing. Ah, uh, maybe, I don't know. Like I'm trying to think of if I tie, what will work tied off best? And usually the round ones are best with it being tied off, but I'm not sure. Maybe he would prefer more gray. So like, let's, let's, or green. We could try the green as they're smaller. The green, the beads, if they are gemstones or regular stone, I have to find the damn holes. My eyesight's great. We'll have natural variation in them. Okay. These are very difficult to find the hole in. Oh, there we go. I'm doing this off screen because reasons. My eyesight is precious. So we're going to probably do like green. So we're going to do a second green. Now I kind of measured husband's wrist last night. It's helpful. This will stretch. But... Sometimes it's a good going when you know what you're getting into. Okay, so then I put a gray and then I will put a purple. Like I said, this is all natural stone. Let me find the damn hole. Please, eyesight, don't do this to me. Usually I have to hold it up to my face because I'm... Blind as a fucking bat. So, this might be our basic pattern, except I would rather have another stone, a gray stone, and then repeat the pattern. So, if I do this, it kind of becomes like differently shaped, but it also keeps my purple away from my green. So if that's something that bothers you. Now some people would look at this and say square mixed with round. No, we're not doing that. But actually since the, at least the purple ones are so close to the size, it's not going to hurt. But you can do what you want. That's the best thing about jewelry really. And if it sucks, like if you're like, this looks awful, you can cut it apart, do it again. You can thank the gods you didn't make this for yourself. Whatever it is you decide to do. Now, since you're working with bigger beads, it can get tricky. Or if you're working with something that's, say, not an eternity pattern. Because if you want it close to the length of your recipient's wrist, you're going to have to figure out if your pattern is just too large to work with. And it might be. Your pattern might be like, oh my God, you know, if we put this pattern on, it's going to be like 15 more inches, you know. So you have to kind of balance your expectation with your recipient's wrist. And that's going to be a little difficult. You have a lot more leeway with 
necklaces size wise because as long as you get to that minimum length of your recipient you're gold but if you don't with the bracelet the bracelet even though it has stretch it will stretch too much and it, it will give to it but it will have too many gaps and you don't want gaps so that's what it looks like thus far not a very like colorful bracelet uh, my husband wears a lot of like uh, gray <laughs> I'm not sure if he does that on purpose or if it's just something that happens, but he wears an awful lot of gray. Gray is not my thing. Uh, my baby brother likes it as well. He talks about like all the different nuances of gray and I'm like, that's because you're an artist. And yes, well, I do see different tones of gray myself because I can look at gradients and detect them. It's still not really my jam. You know, I do see gray without, like, other pops of color is kind of too monotonous. I'm not very into earth tones either a lot of times as far as, like, the browns. I'm going to have to, like, take what I measured his uh, wrist with last night and kind of, like, make sure I'm not overdoing it as well. Now, I won't be able to tie in front of you all. And tying is honestly one of the most stressful parts for me because I'm not good at tying things off. I have spasms because of my cerebral palsy. And more often than not, I will, can and will, drop things, not tie it tightly, swear, cry, hyperventilate, all fun things. Because my brain is like, we're almost there, Chaluka, goddammit. Just control yourself, and yeah, I can't. Okay, so what I might do with this bracelet is I might be a little naughty. <laughs> and when I get back around, I might actually add two more of the beads, like we're starting the pattern over, because my pattern starts with a square. I don't know if that will affect anything or not. We're going to have to, you know... What do you associate with gray that makes it so good? I, I'm curious. I want to know rain. You like the rain that much? Or you like somebody's eye color? You know, like what would make you associate gray? Because most of the time, like I said, I do have a very pretty hat and scarf set in grays and blacks from my sister. Uh, that lady can outdo me in crafting anything. She makes candles, she makes hats and scarves, she makes blankets, she makes these stuffed animals. Uh, husband actually put a picture of the uh, his little avatar, his VTuber model. She actually made him that for Christmas last year. I'm going to get a more squarish one. But yeah, my sister, give her enough time. She can do anything. She actually told me one of the things that she is making me for my birthday, besides more foaming hand soap in the scent of lavender, because I like the scent of lavender, is that she is making me a tumbler, a cup, with like different stuff on it. I think... Mine is going to be like the night sky because, well, you know, I love stars and shit, so. Alright, let's get another purple in here. So yeah, I learned this from my mom. It's the most basic stuff. I can do clasps and stuff like that. Um, I have done double strand pieces, which are really cool. You just run them through certain beads or whatever and then you have two strands i had a two strand one that i loved that i did with spacer beads and spacer beads are these like big like not monstrous but substantial beads that are often like showstoppers they're usually like made of metal or some shit so okay yep 
Well, I have certain things I like that people find, like, or don't understand. Like, I love the number 52. And they're like, why? Because it's like 21 and it's like 777. Seven. Like, twice repeated and it's like, well, no. And that wouldn't even be it. Because your math would be wrong. Literally had someone say that to me. But what I do like it for is on a digital clock, it kind of looks like Rob the Robot. So, like, if you have one of those digital alarm clocks that have, like, the red numbers, like we do in the living room here, I uh, yes, our alarm clock is in our living room. We sleep out here. So, and no, we do have a bedroom, but I don't like sleeping in our bedroom that much, actually. It's, it's complicated. It's very complicated. Let's get that out of there. No one needs to see that. Get... Like, I had a hair through the hole. I'm shedding so badly. Um, sweetheart, if you would give me what I measured your wrist with yesterday or whatever, just to make sure I'm not going to be over, you know. Because here's the thing. Sometimes women will like, or from presenting people will like, oversized as far as like in length jewelry that kind of like hangs off their wrist. I find people who are more masculine presenting, they don't care for that so much. And I know you're like, well, what does that have to do with anything? I don't know. And like I said, individuals are different. Am I already to the point where I need to close this off for my hubby? I might be. Eh, not quite yet. But if I do another full pattern, it might be too big, so... I'm not quite sure what to do here. Hmm. I wonder if we tie it around and I ask him to put it on, if hubby would actually try it for us. But if we made it too small, then I would have to like, hmm. Let me, let me try it on my own wrist once. My wrist isn't as big as his, even though I'm like very, very fat, so. It's uh, still a thing. Because even though I'm like really fat, I have very tiny bone structure. Oh yeah, that, that needs more beads on it. Okay, hold on. We're going to do one more pattern and close it off and then see how much I fucked up. But yeah, so. But just one more pattern. And when you work with gemstone beads or stone beads, a lot of times you will get natural variations. If you can tell some of these squares are not perfect, some of them will have like a rounded edge or like be flatter in one spot or not as big. And that's what you get when you work with naturals, which is not a bad thing. I actually like the variants. I prefer like freshwater pearls that are not perfectly spherical rather than the spherical pearls because I like the natural variants you get from a natural pearl. One that's not cultivated to look perfectly round. You know, I, I enjoy when you go along, because I have a necklace husband bought me that was uh, freshwater pearls years ago. Just a continuous strand so I can throw it over my head because clasps are harder for me as a disabled person. Well, with that... It was actually, let me get more round ones over here, uh, one that was not all the way straight, which means it was cheaper because you don't have perfectly round ones. And fresh water is cheaper than saltwater pearls, for those of you who don't know. Saltwater pearls are, are the ones that are really, really, really godly expensive. Okay, this might be too big, but this is what happened when I did the last pattern. So, what we do now is we add a little more leeway onto the string. And yes, I am, I don't want to say doped up, but I do have my painkiller in me. It, of course, only helps somewhat. So, when you want to cut off, you want to cut off a lot of extra room on your cord because you are going to be tying this son of a bitch off. And if you don't leave yourself enough room, you are going to not have room to tie. And then you are going to be in a very bad place, my friend. This might be too big of a bracelet, but we'll see. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tie a slip knot 
but I won't be able to do it with the camera. And then after I tie the slip knot, I will literally repeat the slip knot four or five times. It will make a substantial size knot in the bracelet, which some people don't like, but it will not, not, your knot will not come undone. So I'm gonna do it away from the camera, probably hyperventilating, swearing, and crying because I have dropped more than I can count. Plus you have to pull that first knot tight without a bead slipping through the knot. Because if it does, then you do it again, you're fucked. I'm not sure if I tightened that or did that tight enough. I don't think I did. Well, fuck me. But that's all right. So it will not come undone. I did two knots. But that's what it's going to look like. And then you'll continue to knot until you don't feel so afraid. All right. So I will knot this a few more times. But your first time you have to pull the string tight or there will be too much lax in your stretch. You don't want that. I think I did that with this though. This doesn't feel, there is no gap, but it doesn't feel as firm as I normally like to make my jewelry feel. Like this one is firm for days, like seriously, but it can't be helped. Plus, if I did it the wrong size, husband will have a little more leeway. Yes, eventually if you wear these, the string will wear out. It is a thing. I, I'm not a fan of that, but it's what happens with jewelry that you put on stretch cord and wear a lot. You can save the beads and restring them. I have actually hated my progress or my project, and I've literally taken it apart and redone it. So I think we are at the stage where I can cut the loose ends after this knot, pulled nice and tight. And I can clip off the ends of the string, but not so close that it actually cuts the knot. And remember, the better your cutting scissors, the better time you will have. This is also my hair cutting scissors because hair doesn't dull a blade quite like paper does. So I have one hair cutting scissors in this household and this is it. So this is my like string cutting scissors and my, so I am gonna just trim the ends off as close as possible without cutting into that knot. Now you will see that knot right between those beads. Okay. And then you will look at yourself and go, ah, perfect. And then you will wing it at your husband's head and you will ask him to try it on. My darling, it might be too big, too small. Try it on. It does stretch over the hand. It's a little big. It's just a little big. It's what I was worried about. He's trying to get his hand and you're going to have to stand up for that, unfortunately. Yeah, he's like flipping through. He can see his hand now. Thank you, darling. It's a little big. Will it fly off your hand, though? No? It's fine. Okay, it's okay. So that's what it's going to look like on him. Now, the colors are not so... See, the, with the purple being as dark as it is, it doesn't look feminine at all, which is what I was hoping for, but there's amethyst in that. That's your birthstone. Before we continue on me try to make a female bracelet, can you give me a Ziploc bag for these? And I would like to take a little time out and show people your birthday gift, which that what the bracelet was for Valentine's Day. I've never made him a bracelet before, and I've made jewelry since before we were together. I've never made him any jewelry at all. I, I mean like that. Actually, he just doesn't really wear it, so I didn't think he'd want anything. And the other night I was talking about my jewelry stream, and he's like, yeah, bring him over. And I said to him, you know, I, yeah, I know you don't wear jewelry. And he said, I'll wear whatever you make me. And I said, don't make that promise. So we just upend everything into this. 
and then I will deal with that later if I want to, or I'll keep that in the same place. Okay, so now our plate is ready for our next project, should we want one. But first, a brief interlude. First, remember to lock everywhere you put your beads tight, because you don't want to get them all over the floor. But uh, my husband got Tekkenate for his birthday, as, as the shelpers in the know will know. And it came when it came out, I gave it to him because it's a, it was a digital copy, and I didn't want him to be without a birthday present. So I made a very disabled, not my intention, little model for him out of clay. I made it with clay, and then I. Uh, colored it in with permanent markers when it was dry. Now the clay I'm using is the Sculpty clay. It did not crack at all. And the markers I'm using are not washables. They are permanents. Because the alcohol will not reactivate your clay even though it is wet. So alcohol markers are totally safe to use on air dry clay. I could have sealed it. I didn't. I didn't really get cracking. Here's his little tail. I, I tried to put some texture in it a little bit, but it's from the rag pretty much. Uh, air dry clay can crack as it dries. I, I wanted him to stand up, but I don't really think he does. I'm going to try to like get him to stand up. Nope, I don't think he does. I think I, I mangled his feet a little too much, but air dry clay can crack if you dry it too fast. So what I did was I put it on a plate and then I literally like covered it with like a semi damp rag and then let it dry. And the rag was actually keeping it too wet so I just let the rag dry out and then I covered it back up with the dry one. And there are no cracks in him so that was impressive. So yes, this is his present. So okay. It's a crafting stream, but it's a jewelry stream, so I should really get him out of the way. All right. We can remove him. And then I will start looking through for my sister's stuff, if I can manage it. Okay, now, do I want to? Do I want to? I said these were young looking, but do I want to? It would be fun. See, one of the reasons I need to redo these bracelets is because that one is totally ruined. But do you see the two two well, uh, strings going through that at the top and the bottom? These will make excellent spacer beads. Thank you. I, uh, I'm not used to clay. I used to want to be a clay animator at one point in my life. I, uh, when I was a kid, Will Vinton, Will Vinton's Claymation Christmas got me hard and got me good. And that's what I was, uh, focusing on for quite a few years as a child. So if we're going to use these little plastic ones, what would be nice to go with them? Well, we're going to go back to the turquoise. Because she loves turquoise. We're going to go back to the turquoise glass. And then we're going to go back to some purple shit to go with the purple. I really think using this is going to be a bad idea, Shelpers. I really think using this is going to be a bad idea. Like, I'm sitting here going, no, that's going to look awful. But, but we're doing it anyway. She doesn't have to wear it. Sis, if you're watching anywhere, you don't have to wear it. I'm just going to give it to her with her Valentine card. Okay, but now I need to find my purples, and it's going to take me a hot minute. I'm not doing the, like, more gemmy kind of purple, because that's just going to be a little too weird. Um, I'm digging back through. Don't worry. I'm still here. Ah, fuck. I think something hit the floor. Well, I have my pinks here. 
pink and purple would work, but I have a bunch of like disconnected pinks. So I'm hoping I can find my purples. Okay, I have a small tube of purple that we're gonna use. And I have another thing of purple somewhere that we're going to look for and find. Oh, one of these things probably will look okay. So let me start cracking some shit open and just spreading it around willy nilly. We're only gonna take one of these little turquoise things. These have rubber toppers, which are nice. If I can actually unsqueeze it. I say the rubber toppers are nice and now I'm gonna undo it and it's gonna fly all over. Is the other one easier for me to grab? Let's find out. Okay. Come on. I feel like these are like the finger traps we had as kids. Oh, even though they're not a screw on, screwing it off does. Unscrewing helps. So not like that day you had the other night, you can actually unscrew this. Okay. We're gonna pour them out. We're going to pour these out. This one might not be entirely without its problems because the label still might be sticky. Oh, we're at barf. Okay, we're good. Yep, there they go. A lot smaller of number. That is going to be a problem for us and I will explain why. But we are using these. We're going to have to like figure out what we're going to do with these because there are so many different colors and sizes. We might have to open up the second package of these I have and then we're going to have to like sort through. I have made what I call asymmetrical bracelets before where it doesn't matter if like things don't match but I was hoping this time it would. I had another bag of the purple ones somewhere and now I have lost them. So it's going to take me about a year to find. I would love to use wool. Oh, dude, hang on. Uh, what's what you want to... Uh, no, I'm looking for... Can we turn the channel back or whatever? Yeah, I'm trying. I'm not sure if we lost. <laughs> I'm hoping we didn't lose. Because uh, he accidentally turned my channel. Okay. Nope, they're, they're a small purple bag. They're a very small bag and they have purple stuff in it, like various sized purple. Nope, clear bag. You can start putting stuff on the floor. Maybe I'll find it under... Okay, that's my pink stuff. Not my purple stuff. I know I should have kept a closer eye on shit. That's okay though. Yeah, start pulling stuff off the table. Unless I only kept... It's like a bag like this except purple. Unless I only took one out. I might only took one out and if so... Fuck me running. Okay, so we're gonna use these. Cause I'm not going to be using a lot of my time for this because... Every time I sit is time that I need to be working because I'm already going to be kind of, uh, let's call it loopy. I don't want to say the brain dead, but yeah, I'm not going to be great. This will not be a bracelet for longevity, unfortunately, but we will work on it. Okay, so I have my pink ones on standby. Okay, so we will now cut these apart. We are going to only use a few. And we are only going to use a few that actually work. Because there's at least one broken one in here. I'm going to try to elevate it so that like an adult wouldn't mind wearing something like this. Which is going to be hard. 
First of all, we're going to have to make two bracelets in one. Why, you ask? Because these have two sets of holes. Not sure if you can see that. My camera has to stop wigging out every time I adjust something. But these have two sets of holes. These are our spacer beads. So we're going to have to figure out just how to work with what we're looking for. And this, since my beads are all kind of mixed together, is going to be like a little bit of a scavenger hunt. And that's going to take more time, unfortunately. And my pink ones are also mixed together because I bought them that way. I didn't do it on purpose. I bought them that way. Usually when I mix or have stuff that I bought that's that mixed together, it's not my issue. And you're going to be like, well, didn't you just? And yes, yes, I did. I clearly know what I have done. Since we are working on a feminine presenting bracelet, we are going to be going into smaller bead territory than we did with the Who's Bond. Now, I could just say fuck it and just string random ass beads together. And the reason I can do that is because I have focal beads. And as long as I get the separators fairly correct and keep the focal beads correct, it would be fine. Like, nobody's going to, like, hold you, like, accountable for that. So that is something you could pursue. I feel like if I do what I'm doing currently, it's not going to work out well. Because it's going to be a little too on the nose, like too much switching over between colors. So what I could do is I could introduce a little bit of pink. But those are very, very bright purple hearts we have going on. I'm going against every, every bit of like color theory I know. I'm going against every everything I know right now. Because my brain is just like, what are we going to do? So we're going to like drop these somewhere in the Pacific. So now we have even more mixed up colors. So we could just do a lot of asymmetry. I have a lot of bigger beads in here. A lot of full pearls, if you can't tell. Uh, they could go around our focal points as kind of like more precisional dividers. But... I'm not sure if that's what we're shooting for currently. And I almost lost the... I did. If you heard the beads at the ground, I just made an amateur mistake. Nope, don't go after them. And my amateur mistake was losing the end of my string in my bead pile and then pulling out the wrong end and then you lose your progress. Which is just what I had been talking to you about, so... Length by example, that is to look Okay. Now these are plastic, not cut glass. A lot of these in here are plastic. Some of them are still gorgeous though. But plastic will not give you the longevity most of the time. These are like the little hearts I had in the other bracelet, which I adore them. I absolutely adore them. I must have put them back in when I finished with this current bracelet I'm wearing yeah i have like all these different pieces in here so we are going to try different things and i'm not sure if we're going for a pattern i don't know if it's actually going to matter with all the disparate beads i have and even the purples are not the same so I might have left my purples in the box. If you don't see what I'm currently working on, that's because I'm putting it right in front of my face, trying to get as much of the afternoon light as humanly possible to string it, which is exactly what's going on. So, yeah. 
I think we can just do like one-offs of this. And then I think the back one is going to, or the bottom strand will be a little more elaborate. We could even do like the top strand will have like the small beads, the bottom strand of the two strand bracelet will have, you know, bigger beads. We could do all kinds of stuff with this. The issue is, will we get lost in the sauce, as the kids say? I, I am not a kid, so everything that comes out of my mouth when I'm talking on Gen V, Gen A, Gen F, whatever, whatever y'all are now. Although I read the other day, y'all are hitting your quarter-life crisis. So... Probably, probably who does it is Gen Z. I'm a Gen Y, but I've always felt closer to Gen X because I'm one of the older millennials being almost 40 and all. And when they blame like millennials for like everything, like they just want to go out and party. It's like a lot of us have kids, fam. Like, are you serious? A lot of us have kids and jobs and own homes and have bad backs and I at least have a bad back so see I'm not going to worry too much about what exists on each line I know you're going to be like but can you really do a bracelet that goes and matches down the other side not really one thing you have to worry about with fake pearls is you can see the hole but the hole might not be drilled all the damn way. And if not, what you have to do is you have to either find a different pearl or you have to shove a needle into the hole. And that's something I really don't want to do right now. So I'm going to try to find a different one. So if all these are okay, I was going to say if all these exist in a time continuum where nobody drilled holes, I'm going to be really salty. Okay, so. We're just going to keep stringing random ass beads along. I know everybody's like, why are we doing it this way? Well, because we can. Sometimes the asymmetrical is the fun part. It doesn't always have to have symmetry, like with the uh, husband's bracelet. You don't have to worry about it so much. Is it pretty? Does it work? You know? So I'm starting the list for my... Um, I want to say my retro stream, but that ain't it. My nostalgia stream. And oh my god, I have so, so much shit on that list. Like... My husband was like... What do you mean that game was part of your... Like a severe part of your childhood? And I'm like... Yes, indeed. He's like, I didn't know that or whatever. I'm like, yup. So, yeah, I have a lot of movies, a lot of games, some books I didn't talk about before. I do really want to talk about, like, the Terry Pratchett books again. Because I think the Terry Pratchett books, for me, were just a very important reminder on how much something can save you literature, a song, something. How much art can save the world. And if you don't believe me, I'm not going to try to get political on you, but hear, hear me out just half a second. In oppressive regimes, in places where people are getting bombed, in all that kind of shit, in places where genocide occurs, or the government is a dictatorship, whatever, whatever whatever group of flavor you want to talk about. You know, one of the people they get rid of is poets. Why do they imprison poets? Why do they kill them? Journalists, people kind of understand because they're the ones getting the truth out there, right? But why poets? Poets don't have boots on the ground necessarily. They don't go into places and talk to sources. Why? Because art can change the world. Art can change the world. Any kind of art can change the world. Now, you may not believe me, 
but hear me out for half a second. So say I make this bracelet and say with this bracelet, as I pass it down to the next person, the colors remind them of something to do with a cause or something. Let's say it's the LBGT flag. Let's say it's the whatever, whatever you want to give them. The flag of your home country, whatever. That becomes a keepsake, but it could also become a statement. Oh, no, I used those two close together. I still don't want to do that part. Okay, so when I'm dealing with this and when I'm doing this for that person, it becomes a sort of statement. I see you. I see your plight. I see whatever. I could start selling these bracelets that are, let's say, the country of Martina Nevitalova. That, that's an old tennis pro. Let's say she had her own country, okay? Martina's country... Mar Martinville but <laughs> it has these for the, the flag and they're going through hardship and let's say I start selling these to raise money for the country let's say I use these as a symbol of resistance like the colors they're not allowed to fly because they're let's say Martinez country nation is no longer seen as a valid country nation and all of a sudden Martinville is not on the map anymore, but I make Martin bracelets, but the colors of their no longer recognized flag. What does that do? What does that say? It says, I'm remembering. It says, I'm supporting. Yep. Anything that has a message behind it has power. Yep. Exactly. So it becomes a sign of resistance. It becomes a sign of hope. It becomes a sign of unity. Anything that has a message. And poets do not shy away. Like I said, sorry about taking my project away. I'm trying to get a very little bead to be in a very, in a very tiny string. And sometimes that's difficult. I have to adjust my stupid body. Hang on. I'm starting to get a little too much pain. I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to be on stream. I wanted to finish this. I didn't think I'd be able to start this. I thought the first bracelet would take my spoons, my allotted spoons. But we're going to keep going as long as we can, feasibly. And I might finish this off stream if I can't finish it on. And then I will kind of sort of have to figure that out. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to figure out, are we halfway in? I don't know. We might be. Although the bracelet might still be too short. So we're going to do a few more beads. And then when we hit the middle, we're going to do something a little unexpected. And that means we're going to find a little bit bigger bead after some smaller beads. Why? Because that way when we hit our midpoint, it will be a different beast. And when it is a different beast, it will hopefully help us out. So we're going to hit a few of these, the smaller ones. And then I'm going to find one of those bigger fake pink pearls. One of these right about, huh, not that big. Something a bit more concise. Probably like one of these. Okay, but it doesn't have the hole. Damn it. <laughs> um, you know, I, I hate to do this, but I'm going to have to bail. I am. I don't want to, but I am in pretty damn good pain right now. And uh, I've lasted a little over an hour, so you just let me get at least one project done, which I'm very grateful for. I did not know that would be a thing. 
Uh, I'm sorry about yesterday's stream of RE2. That was not, not, not what I had planned at all. Um, but I tried. And I'll play it again, and I'll just tell people, like, what I did when I did it. And that'll have to be good enough. So, Thursday I'll be back with more Rogue Legacy 2. We are going up to the tower now. I think we only have two areas left. And it's going to be tower exploration, then hopefully the next time, tower boss. And then we'll move on to the fish and dry lake. So, that that's my plan anyway. So, uh, thank you so much for watching. Um... Sorry I couldn't get two projects done, but I didn't figure. This was kind of a pie in the sky. And I will see you, at least some of you, for Thursday. Okay? Thanks, everybody. Bye!